If you could choose what happens after you die, how would you want the afterlife to be like? Story 1. Honestly, the good place from the eponymous sitcom, after the Soul Squad fixes, it seems perfect. An endless paradise of your own making until you are finally ready to move on and re-enter the universe. Story 2. I always thought that the best way would be not knowing you died and life just keeps going but in a more positive way and with good things happening to you. People are nicer, you don't have financial problems anymore, etc. Story 3. I want to be reincarnated as a normal person. I want to look like everyone else and like what everyone else likes and think what everyone else thinks and do what everyone else likes to do. I have no idea what that feels like. I've enjoyed my life much of the time, but not feeling like other people has sometimes made me think I had one life and spent it not being quite human. Story 4. The whole place split in two. The first being a large garden city, where you can go to restaurants and order whatever food you want, go to libraries to read whatever book you want, got to cinemas and see whatever movie you want, music gigs, art galleries, gaming cafes, etc. Also, as a place you can go meet other people, a social heaven. The second part is a huge area you can mold and shape into whatever you want. You can create chalk mountains, red oceans, safely burning forests, and liquid starscapes, and it is entirely your place. You can invite people if you want, or you can stay in it alone. You can populate it with animals, that regardless of their real-life temperament, here they are, your friends. It is your world to shape. Story 5. My belief is that whatever a person believes will happen after death. My personal belief is that we are given free reign to do whatever we want with our current consciousness. For example, if you want to experience what it would be like to be a snow leopard with your human consciousness, you could, you stipulate the conditions, and then enter a lifelike world built to your specifications. The only difference between it and the real life you lived is that you know you have died, and this afterlife reality can be altered, changed, or stopped at any moment. Another thing you could do is relive your exact life, but with a superpower. Or you could simply review your entire life and see the objective truth of different situations. Basically, you have an infinite number of options to do, and once you're satisfied with your consciousness, the you that lived a real life, exhausted everything you've ever wanted, and have nothing left to do in the afterlife, you then have one option left to reincarnate. All humans are made of energy and your spirit eventually needs to be recycled and you roll the dice for a new real life once you're ready to leave your current consciousness, memories, experiences, etc. behind. Story 6. Heaven should have a nice library where you can read any book from any time in history with your best people. For me, forever means having as many cups of coffee as I want and laughing all the time. Story 7. It would be a room with a door and the door would lead you to whatever movie, book, video game, or TV show you wish and be whoever you want. Sort of like a holodeck from Star Trek. Story 8. I'd want to be greeted by all my pets that died before me. Then they'd guide me to our new home in a shire where we'd spend the rest of eternity gardening and baking and playing in the sun and grass waiting for the rest of our friends and family to join us. Story 9. I want to be able to have the ability to help my friends and family out from the other side. Like, if they're really down on their luck, I can have them find $1.20 on the ground. Or if they ask for a sign, I can give them one. Show up in their dreams, or give them signs I'm still there from the other side. Give them a hug when they're down. That kind of thing. Story 10. I want to be able to alternate between complete lights out, wandering the world wherever I want, and replaying moments from my life while seeing what happens if I made different choices. Story 12. You are led to a blank room by someone who appears to you as what you would find most comforting. Some see an angel, some see a relative, etc. The blank room is indeterminate in size. At first you may be overwhelmed, even fearful at the prospect of being locked in an empty room. But then your guide asks you to imagine something. You close your eyes and imagine your favorite work of fiction. And when you see yourself in that fictional world, able to walk and talk to anybody or do anything that you want, your guide explains, the room will he anything you want it to be and more. Whatever you can imagine, whatever you can want. What if I want to see someone I love? Not a fictional version of them, but the real thing, you ask. You can have that too, your guide replies. What about boredom? After a millennia, I'm sure I'll get bored, you ask. Now why would boredom or pain or sorrow exist here? You decide what exists here. If you do not want those things to exist, they won't. I'd care why that turned into a story. Just how I'd want it to be. Story 13. 
Dylan Moran had a skit on this that I keep in my back pocket. Why is there supposed to be a spiritual afterlife? All through life the spirit is tested and strained. Why can't we have a purely physical afterlife? I just want to be a pair of lips rolling around looking for huge lumps of chocolate to fuck. And put my arse way over there so I don't even have to deal with it. Story 14. Just nothing. Peaceful non-existence. Any sort of afterlife will get terrible if it's gonna be for an eternity. And I don't want any kind of reincarnation. One fucking time is more than enough here, lol. Story 15. I just want a personalized man cave. With a pool outside. Unlimited food. All the entertainment I could want. A pool. A hot tub. And my cat. And a common area outside of that to interact with other souls or look on what's happening on Earth. Story 16. In an open field with my boyfriend, who hopefully already became my husband at the time of our deaths. On a picnic blanket where we have unlimited little crafts to do with each other under a beautiful sky. Also, we'd be surrounded by little bunnies and puppies and endless flowers. Story 17. A wake up from a pod in a Dyson sphere. Life was a simulated adventure where the other people were fellow players. In such a reality, I'd like to express gratitude to the other players who were close to me and showed love. I would probably want to see them, even though they were not real. I'd still like to be with them for a while. Then, back in the pod, ready for another adventure. Story 18. A cozy home with Missy Dog, R.I.P., and room for my husband and my son when they die. I could visit Earth as a ghost and check on my son, my husband, and my twin brother and leave little reminders that I'm still with them. Story 19. Reincarnation. I don't care if I'm another human, an animal, or a plant. I don't care if I'm on Earth. I don't care what point of time I am reincarnated in. I would like a recap of my current life, all the achievements and memories and people I met along the way. I would like to know what mistakes I made, what sins I committed. I want to know the different butterfly effect scenarios if I would have made a different choice. And then I am satisfied with whatever wisdom I receive from this eternal being. I want to start fresh. I do not want to remember my current life. I would like this cycle to continue forever. Story 20. I feel like any one thing might get old after an X amount of eternities. So maybe a combination of different versions? Basically a giant world with a bunch of different activities. Want to sit in a garden enjoying some peace and quiet? No problem. Want to have a giant feast with your lost loved ones? Go ahead. Want to feel the rush of adrenaline as you run into a giant battlefield? Where suffering is non-existent and death is temporary? Sure thing, Bubba. Want to play around with a long-lost pet? They're waiting for you in a field of tall grass just past the cozy log cabin. Want to relive old memories? Sure, go ahead. Story 21. I want the choice of skipping a life to enjoy the afterlife. I had an NDE and the peace and pain-free feeling was amazing. I want to be there for a while. Where I was, was, was a field, a nice warm breeze, the grass moving with the breeze, and peace. So nice. So peaceful. Story 22. I'd like to think it's like the end of a video game. You can go back and replay levels, so to speak. Revisit old places slash times you've been before. Revisit all the memories you've had and all the people you've met only to come back to the main menu or the source as the Matrix explains it. Just imagine loading a saved state in your life. It'd be amazing. Story 23. I like to think, hope, that after death, time is not linear as it is while we're alive. I would love to go back to certain times in my life when I was truly happy and visit that period again. Especially I would go back to when my boys were babies and small children. I want to hug and cuddle them again. I miss having that kind of relationship. I doubt I will have grandchildren, and my kids were the best thing to happen to me. They are grown now and don't need me much. Story 24. My own personal heaven. One that's tailored made to everyone's experiences. Mine would be a really nice apartment in the city with doors to different universes that I can experience any reality. From fantasy settings, to space adventures, to even redoing my life, I can always pause those worlds to just come back to the hub world, which is my apartment, where I can go out into the city every day and do whatever. Bad people go through hell, but it's not a form of punishment, but a way to show them the error of their ways, which will eventually allow them to get into heaven after some time. Story 25. I would make it so that you can know anything at all about your life and any statistic regarding that life. Total steps walked, greatest feat of strength, happiest, saddest moment lived, etc. You can relive moments in your life, watch your entire life like a movie, and even have a simulation where you can see certain what-ifs and make different chooses to see how things would have played out. When you're ready, you can reincarnate into a new person, 
whom, somewhat like genetics, might get some personality traits from one of your lives, some from another, etc. You forget everything regarding the afterlife until you die, in which you remember all your past lives and get sent back to the afterlife. Story 26 After I die, I awaken inside a room filled with loved ones. They take me out of the VR system and we talk about what it's like to live a virtual life where we die at the end. It's the ultimate experience since we are actually immortal. The thrill of believing that we will actually die is the ultimate experience. Story 27 Honestly, The Good Place has a lot right in the final episodes of that show. Infinite time is no way to exist and would be worse than what most would consider torturous to be immortal. Sure, the first million or billion years might be interesting. You could absorb as much information as you can, create technology beyond comprehension, but to what end? Let's say you're given immortality a bit like Vandal Savage in the DC Comics. You could become a conqueror, a leader, a true influencer, not those dumb idiots on TikTok and Instagram. Let's say you do that for countless generations, never getting bored or apathetic. Let's say you exist for millions of years and see the progression of mankind to the point we're no longer anything close to the way we are now. Well, eventually, the sun will either burn out, expand, and consume Earth, or a thousand other things a sun can do in its lifetime. But it will die eventually. Earth is dead, so you head to the next habitable planet. After all, you have millions of years to perfect space travel. Eventually, every star in the Milky Way will die or cease to exist. The number of Goldilocks planets dwindle to the point of no longer existing. Eventually, all matter in the galaxy will be consumed by the gravitational pull of the largest black hole. Oregon, you're unlucky enough to drift off into the nothingness of space between galaxies. Oh, and because there's no center point of the universe and the infinity of space is only increasing, Think about that brain teaser for a bit. The odds of you ever making it to another galaxy, because for all we know, those other galaxies don't even exist anymore. It's just the light from them can take millions or billions of years to get to us. You may never see or witness anything ever again except the vastness of emptiness. We do not know if galaxies are moving faster than our own. In a million slash billion slash trillion slash quadrillion years, there may be absolutely nothing in our skies ever again and there you are, stuck as an immortal. I could go on, but the tangent I'm on is depressing and mind-bogglingly complex enough already. The idea of dealing with the sense of immortality, on top of also knowing I can't do anything about it because I'm in an alternate dimension known as the afterlife, is worse than any physical pain of torture associated with a traditional kind of hell in the Bible. Here's the main thing I want when I die. Being able to decide to choose to no longer be anything in the universe seems very important to me. Just cease to exist peacefully, and without any regrets. That said, I would like to be able to zoom out and see, celestially speaking, just how small are we are in the grand scheme. Time manipulation and imagination manifestation, ability to create anything from my brain, would be really good as well. I'd probably spend a couple decades or longer as a real Batman set in Bruce Timm's or Rocksteady's Gotham, take a turn as Gambit or Beast or Magneto, and fight the likes of Kang, Galactus, and Thanos in a made-up reality of my own design. Sounds like a good way to waste a few millennia. Story 28. Reincarnation. But in RPG style, based on how well or badly you have behaved in life, you accumulate karma points. When you have to reincarnate, you can build your character. You can spend karma points to set stats, birthplace, social background, historical period, and so on. You can take negative characteristics to get points to spend on other positive ones. Like I lower my muscle mass to get enough points to raise my IQ by 10. Phew, it costs a lot to be born in New York in a wealthy family. Let's try this North Korea that costs very little. Stuff like that. That would be interesting. Of course, that would imply that the disabled and those who are born into difficult backgrounds have deserved it because of their misdeeds in their previous lives. So, well, we're getting into dangerous talk here. Story 29. First, I want to sit in a theater with a big bucket of popcorn and watch my life back, with someone cool narrating it. And I want to see the moments where if I'd made a different choice how it would have played out. I want to see times I almost died but avoided it, or had help from above on avoiding it. I want to see when I came across familiar souls. Like, you and Kate hit it off so well because you were sisters in 1735, you lived on neighboring farms after you got married and you died three days apart, or conversely. You hated Jeff so much because he shot your favorite dog in 1936. And then I want to go visit with people and animals I've loved and lost and have gone before me. And then I'll go back and remind the people I left behind that I'm still around. 
When I'm good and ready, I'll choose a different soul to come back for another round. Story 30. Flying around as a ghost would be cool. Almost like one big social media platform or something. Being able to go everywhere, read everything, see everything, meet everyone. Just do things I'm not able to do in life. Travel to the past or maybe even the future. See what loved ones are up to after I'm gone. Stuff like that. Forever? I'm not sure. Maybe have that big good place button somewhere if you've seen enough. Story 31. I'd like to be a ghost for a few years. See the places that I never got to see while I was alive and watch over my family. Then spend a while in some form of heaven where I get to see all the people in my life that died before me. Once I have closure on this lifetime, I would like to be reincarnated as a dog and live a life where I just unconditionally love my owners. Story 32. I'd prefer it to be like a dream state, where different scenes are experienced based on what you want and who you're with. Your loved ones are there in the different ways you remember them, including pets. There's not necessarily eternal bliss, but sadness and pain are very muted. Whenever you're ready to go back and start a new life, there's a party celebrating your bonds, where you're able to choose a small number of people to meet again in a future life, and a meeting with the divine, where you have a chance to understand the lessons you didn't quite get in your last life, with the expectation that you try to learn during this next life. Story 33. I'd like to be a ghost for a few years, see the places that I never got to see while I was alive and watch over my family, then spend a while in some form of heaven where I get to see all the people in my life that died before me. Once I have closure on this lifetime, I would like to be reincarnated as a dog and live a life where I just unconditionally love my owners. Story 34. I would spend some time hanging with my family members' souls and with some friends but I'd get bored after eons, so I would want to come back to Earth as a spirit. Just to observe humanity as a vagrant for a while, I would maybe reincarnate a few times, maybe come back as a woman this time around, maybe a different animal. Then I would become a humongous tree for about a millennia, as humanity evolves and changes around me, only to finally die and become an asteroid to destroy it all, make it a dinosaur's extinction sequel. After that, just fuse into the universe, expand everywhere, until it all eventually ends or changes.